hi Jenna. Hi <laughs> Shelby. <laughs> I love that that's the official intro now. It's, oh, hi know. Jenna. <laughs> it's so fun. I love it. It's funny because I feel like I say that in real life too. You do. So it's kind yes. of perfect. Yeah, it is perfect. <laughs> oh goodness. Well, welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. We are, this is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> yes. Today we're talking about Restore Me, the fourth book in the Shatter Me series. Yes. Yes. We both have our physical copies here in front of us. Yep. Yep. <laughs> book. It's like a book club fashion. You always have to have the physical book in front of you. <laughs> oh yeah. Even if you read it on a Kindle, I feel oh, like exactly. you need the physical book to put on your trophy shelf. hundred percent. I love a trophy shelf. We <laughs> love it. All right. Well, what are we drinking today, Jenna? Mm. We have a white wine. We have a Josh Sauvignon Blanc is what we we're drinking it. right now. It's hot here in Denver today. Yeah, it's pretty warm. We're taking some some photos that you guys might see soon. Um, <laughs> Exciting things coming. <laughs> we were, but yes, it was quite hot outside while we did that, and so I think we both came in and wanted something cool. A little chilled. Yeah. Yeah, we love that. It's pretty that. good, though. We love that. Well, speaking of some photos that you might see, uh, follow us over on Instagram and TikTok at Miss Willa's Book Club Pod. And then we are also going to be recording all of our episodes and go follow us on YouTube at Miss Willa's Book Club. We'll have our full episodes on there, so we're so excited. Speaking of a full episode, join our book fam on Patreon for all of our exclusive content. We are so excited. We've got so many excited things coming up that we cannot wait to share with you guys. Yeah. All links are going to be in our link tree on our bio. So we're excited. We've got a lot of like, book fam now. Yeah. I love it. All right. So we're going to start off the episode uh, with a spoiler-free section. Mm-hmm. So... Would you like to read the synopsis on the back of the book for this Restore Me? I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 16 days. <laughs> Get it, feels, girl. It feels Get like it. it should be dramatic. <laughs> it, feels, it feels like it should be dramatic. It should. It's been 16 days since Juliet F- Ferrars? Ferrars? I don't even know how to say her last name. I say Ferrars. Ferrars. Like Ferrari? Ferrari. Ferrari. Bring us back to 2000s. Ferrari. Ferrari. It's like the heart. Ferrari. Yeah. Ferrari, Shelby. Ferrari. Oh, were we emo growing up? Who knows? One will never tell. Well, I don't know. Facebook probably would Fa- tell. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Have we had a glass of wine? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. It's been 16 days since Juliet Ferrars killed the Supreme Commander of North America and took over as the ruler of the reestablishment on the continent. 16 days since she assassinated Warner's father. Juliet thought she had won. She took over Sector 45 and now has Warner by her side, but she's still the girl with the ability to kill with a single touch, and now the rest of the world is carefully watching her every move to see what kind of leader she, leader she will be. Juliet and Warner have risked everything, but will they be able to control the power Juliet wields, or will it control them? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I don't think I had read this back before I read the book, but it kind of makes sense now. It kind of, Yeah, it absolutely does now. Um, <laughs> something that we've talked about before is that Shelby doesn't like to um, know about a book before we she like reads it. like to go it. in blind. Yeah, I love to go in blind. Like, somebody says, oh, I recommend this. Like, oh, go, I'll go ahead and read it. I don't even need to know what it's about. And then I'm like, wow, I was really surprised. Like, no, you just knew nothing about the book. Yeah, that's the same. Divine Rivals, I just started reading, and yes. I literally had absolutely no idea what it was about. Yep, same, same. I was so confused, and then I was like, oh, wow, but this is a fantastic, amazing book. So, yeah. awesome. All right, um, spoiler-free rating. Whoa, Jenna, <laughs> what would you give this book? <laughs> I think we've got some differing opinions. Yeah. I gave it a... One and a half stars, oh. only because uh, it would have been one, but I reserve one stars for books that I don't finish. Wow. And because we were going to be talking about this book, I forced myself. I'm pretty sure I snapped you like five Halfway, times yeah, in the last did. 200 pages. Like, can I just be done with this? Is this over yet? And I was like, oh. Yeah, I would have given it one star, but I, I finished it, so it got one and a half. Wow. <laughs> what um, did you think? On the other side of the spectrum, I even have it written down here. Uh, I gave this a four, four and a half. Yeah. I, okay, here's what I said for it. I loved this book. I couldn't put it down. I finished it in 24 hours and I was like, wow. Okay, keep in mind, I read it the day after my surgery. So maybe I was still a little loopy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blame it on the Give drugs. me some grace. Give me some grace. <laughs> oh my God. 
All right, so I think that's it for our spoiler free. So spoilers coming if, if you, you haven't, haven't read, read this book. Yet. Don't listen. Yeah, don't listen in. Um, all right, Jenna, give us give us some thoughts. Why did you hate this so much? It was so boring. It was, yeah. I don't okay, know. Yeah. I don't know why. I just felt so bored for like literally until maybe the last thirty pages. I, I guess I could, I could agree with that. But it was just boring and. I just still, I think I've said this in the last three books, I find Juliet so annoying. So annoying. And especially during this book, because I think I even said it, if you listened to our, the um, review that we had on Ignite Me, the third book, when she's like, I'm going to be the leader of the reestablishment. I even said that. I was like, I, you're this too make unstable. Sense. You're so young. I was like, I felt like that was the most YA thing to be yes. like, oh my God, well now I'm just going to take over. Take over the world. And so then the first half of this book was just her bitching about having responsibility. <sighs> I'm like, what did you think was going to happen? Exactly. And yep. so I, I think I just had a hard time getting over it because I found her so irritating. Yes. Um, I do agree with that. So that was probably my biggest gripe with the book also is that she complains the entire fucking book. Yeah. Well, okay. So kind of switching gears a little bit. I hated that about the book. I loved that you have, I'm complaining, I'm complaining, I'm complaining. And then you have Warner's going through some real shit. Yes, yeah. And he's like, wow, all of my family is dead. I just found out I have new brothers. I cannot believe that Juliet is sitting here and whining about every fucking thing that's happening. And... I live for Warner's chapters yeah. in this book. Yeah, I agree. I think Warner's chapters were, were better in this one, too. And I think it was good. We kind of talked about in um, previous books, too, you know, the whole, like, unreliable narrator. Oh, or yeah. just, like, the narrator having a really biased point of view. And so I agree that having Warner's point of view, like, helps fill in maybe how other people are perceiving Juliet, Juliet yeah. and not just how she's perceiving herself. Right. Because she comes in, like... I don't know, kind of overconfident, I think, even in, like, the meeting with the leaders. Yeah. And uh, when she when she's first meeting with the leaders without, not leaders, the son of the, the leader. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what his name like was. Like, the children. Yeah. Yeah. But when she's, like, first meeting with them, and she's like, I don't need Warner. I can do this by myself. And then she totally, uh-huh. royally fucks it up. And I'm like, She oh. did. Like, that's what you get. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was one part where I was like, okay, why in the world would you ever think that you could just do this by yourself? Yeah. You know that you're already having issues with like other things that are happening. Why do you think that you can come in and just like, oh, I'm just going to do th- No, no, no. I didn't like it either. Yeah. No. So I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? I, okay. I really think that like the last 50 to a hundred pages 50. was really 50. <laughs> 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 was really what made this book for me yeah. because all, we found out a lot of information in the last 50 pages that I just like didn't see coming and so to me that was just like oh my gosh like that that's what made it a 4.5 the, I that's why I went through this book so fast was because you're waiting for something to happen exactly waiting for something to happen and I was like skimming through Juliet's pages yeah yeah mm-hmm Fair. So did you have any favorite parts of the book? Yeah, there were a couple parts that definitely made me laugh. I think one of my favorite parts is after Juliet and Warner, this is like towards the end of the book. Mm-hmm. I'm at like maybe 374-ish. Yeah. Um, and she is meeting for the first time Warner's ex-girlfriend and like <laughs> some of the other kids and stuff. Yeah. And she's already kind of broken up with Warner. And so she's in her <laughs> and hungover. And so she's in her own weird headspace, right? And she's like, who the fuck are you? And then, like, (laughs) people are like, well, and, you know, like, oh, what's your name or whatever? Like, how do I introduce yourself? And she goes, you can call me the Spring Commander of the North America. And then she walks away. I was dying laughing Were at you? that. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> it was just like, because like, I could just totally imagine the expression was being like, yeah, can you call me Spring Commander? Turn well, we've around. all been hung over. <laughs> Like, I, like you just don't want to deal with anything, and she's already doing a bad job of leading. And so I, I pictured I everybody funny. else's, like, expressions when she said that, because she's like, oh, I'm a badass. I'm saying this, and I'm just going to, oh, like... Oh, see, that's, we took that totally different ways. That's really, really funny. Because I took that more as, like, that's the first time that she actually was speaking with confidence. 
I actually took that as a good thing because oh. the other, she's been really like bumbly and like overly yeah, nice, has. giggly or whatever the other time she interacted uh-huh. with the children. And then I felt like that was the first time that she's like, no, fuck I'm you guys, your, yeah. I have the most power of anyone in this room. So do what I say. Dang. That was how I read that. So that's oh, why I liked okay, that part. Okay, okay. I see that. I was thinking she was like hung over and fed up. And so she just like wasn't going to take it anymore. Yeah. And so, yeah, to me that was just like her kind of being like overly confident, which I've, I said before, I think she's already been overconfident. And so, yeah, that, that we yeah. definitely pictured that differently, that, <laughs> but I was picturing everybody else's expression. Like, did she just fucking say that? Oh yeah. So I liked that part. And then the other part I liked was, um, when Warner is just like in a hole, this is like around 281. Okay. And, um, Warner is just like kind of in his little depression hole of like, oh my god, we've broken up and we're never getting back together. Yeah. And him and Kenji kind of have a nice like I liked that. talking through things moment, which that was nice. But the part that I laughed at was after <laughs> Kenji sees his back and um and Warner describes that like the scars are from the birthday presents from his dad and Kenji goes why am I always getting involved in other people's shit why can't I just mind my own business why can't I keep my mouth shut Kenji and then, stands and then Warner says you know I've always wondered the same thing <laughs> It's like they're connecting. Like these are the people that we wanted to really yeah. connect throughout the book, and here they are finally connecting. Yeah, I freaking loved it. But we we love we love Kenji. Yes, we are Kenji stand still. A hundred percent. Oh my gosh. So those were my two favorite parts. What about you? I like it. Um. So favorite parts, but really sad. Oh. Uh, kind of throughout the book, you're seeing that Warner is going through like this this whole thing that he's like kind of keeping private to himself he hasn't even really told Juliet about it he's like literally just handling like all of this trauma about his father dying about yeah well his mom and And, his dad yeah mom and dad I still don't believe his mom is dead I don't know why I still have it because and so I went back yeah really I went back and I looked at ignite me Uh uh-huh or unravel me I don't remember which book that happens I don't remember which yeah I don't remember which one he comes into the house and all the equipment and his mom is gone. This is gone. It's not. But yes. that's all that we know <gasps> is that everything is gone. I kind of, I feel like prediction. this is my prediction. I don't think she's dead. I think that his dad moved her. But now his dad is dead. So right. I, oh. So I don't know. I don't know when she's going to come back into the picture. You think but she's I'm, coming back? I think. And maybe I'm going to feel really dumb when I read the rest of the books and she's actually dead. No, but this I'm, is a great prediction. I really, because we never see a dead body. Mm-hmm, we never. never have a funeral. Mm-hmm. We never do any of this stuff. I think she was <gasps> relocated. Stop. That's such a good prediction. Especially because uh, Paris. <laughs> 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 because uh, Mr. Anderson. Warner's, yeah, Mr. Anderson, Warner's dad. Um, I think he was like kind of trying to teach warner a lesson too because he was at that point already kind of pissed i think at warner's behavior and so i feel like he moved his mom as like a "Mm, you know let me make you upset (gasps) gosh like trying to get a reaction out of it yeah oh my gosh so i mean he got it so i don't think that she's dead and i think my prediction is that somewhere in these last two books that her and juliet like are going to be able to find some common ground or teach each other or something because they have opposite powers (gasps) so that's what i think is gonna happen Okay, I, honestly, I would love it if that happens. I think that that would be such a great, like, plot to go off of. Because there has to be a reason. And, Grant, remember, this is only supposed to be a three-book. Right. And then it was extended. And so I think that would be incredible for the plot. And for Juliet's character growth. Because let me tell you, she fucking needs it. Yeah. Well, and for Warner, too. Because I think that yeah. I, I could just see it as a nice... Uh, like character arc of family for him mm-hmm. to go from okay my mom's super messed up and my dad is an asshole my I think both of them die I have these new brothers and now in this book uh, you know Adam makes a good step forward in yes. trying to form a relationship with Warner right and so I think that we'll see I think James is going to find out in the next book that they're brothers helps so. and I think that they're going to start to bond a little bit more as family and then I think uh, like maybe in the last book or something yeah. is my guess that Warner's mom will come back to and then all of a sudden Warner's life is going to feel really full with Juliet and family. I like it. I hope, I hope so because right now, like during this book, he was so empty and it was like, 
it was... <sighs> It was kind of whiplash going from Juliet being like, I can handle this all on my own, to Warner being like, I am severely depressed and I don't know who to talk to about it or like what to talk about. And he's like, I have to step up. I have to do all of this, but I have priorities. And it's such a crazy difference from the Warner that we knew from the first and the second Mm -hmm. book because we just thought he was just like this like uncaring asshole. Mm -hmm. And now he's like, wow, he's going through some shit and... It was cool to actually see his POV from all that. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I think that's why I liked the book so much is because we talk about this all the time, but Mm -hmm. like you love like the action and the trials. Yeah. I love love, You love plot. You like people. I love character growth and people. And so seeing, like I still hate Juliet. She's so annoying. She's so... <laughs> She's my least favorite main character, I think, of most books that I've read. Me and too. I, don't, I can't think of another main character that I've liked less. Yeah, me too. I can't either. And I Which think I'm her? living for Warner at this mm-hmm. point. Um, but you know what? Some people really like... And again, it's not exactly a trope, but mm-hmm. like books or stories that have unlikable main characters because like everybody left Breaking Bad. I hated it. Because you I, hated Breaking Bad? I mean, not hated it, but I... But you didn't like it. I didn't like not feeling like I could root for anybody because I hated all the characters. And some people think that's, like, oh, really I compelling. I loved Breaking Bad. Yeah, some people think that's really compelling to have, like, all characters that are kind of unlikable. Yeah. Versus <gasps> I really... I, I think I, I have to feel like I can root for somebody's growth. Mm, mm-hmm. And if I just feel like everybody sucks, then I'm like, why do I care about their story if everybody sucks? Okay, but so... But it is a really, like, I think... It's so different. Yeah. Because so, pe- people love Breaking Bad. And yes, I think that I that's part of why Bad. you liked this book so much yeah. more than I did. This character growth and everything. And Well, okay, I think now this is a very different opinion than I have the first, second, third oh. book. I'm rooting for Warner. Mm. And You see him more as the main character than Juliet. Yes. Well, well, okay, maybe not as the main character, but he's starting to come in as like a second main main character, if that makes sense. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because... Why? <laughs> Why? No, okay. <laughs> oh, I love it. Every time. These freaking crystal grass. Mm-hmm. I've clearly had a glass. Oh. <laughs> so, I think, so before it was just Juliet's POV. Yep. Now we have Juliet and Warner. And we're just starting to see such a difference. Was this the first book we had Warner's POV? I think, I think it, it was, was the first one. Yeah. And so now we're starting to see his point of view and realizing he's got so much more depth to him than we thought he did. That, that was good. I agree. Fine. I'll come up to two stars. <laughs> I'm not trying to convince you. No, no, it's fair. And I, I kind of <laughs> figured once I sat on it, I kind of figured that maybe it would change. I think Minus just, the opposite. Yeah. I'm coming you came down. down. Yeah. Well, I for, think I like the so the end of the we book. We influence each other. We always <laughs> do. Be in the middle out of three. We, <laughs> let's cheers again. Look at my... <laughs> They're like ding 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 because we're I know. <laughs> both shaky. It's so fun. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. But I feel like now instead of just getting Juliet's point of view, we're also getting Warner's. Yeah. And that's what I think I liked so much about this is that we're getting so much more of his point of view. And so we're like understanding so much more about him. Mm-hmm. And I love that character growth. I just love, I love people. I love all the things. So the only person that I'd say I did really like that comes in on this uh-huh. book. Do you want to talk about her? Nira. Is that, wait. Is that what her name is? I'm sorry. Nazira. 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 Yeah. I'm thinking Nira from another book. Um, yeah. So Nazira, she is the sister of the the guy we were talking about earlier that we don't remember his name because he just like really doesn't she's matter. one of the other children yes. of the other uh, commanders, commanders in the world and where which commander is that Europe is that where they are no Africa? Uh, I don't remember where they are oh, shit. let me let me because she said she was originally from Baghdad it's the supreme of Asia yeah Asia Asia yep it's the the daughter of the supreme in Europe is the ex girlfriend right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I but I did I did like Nazira and I, I thought I really liked Nazira. Did you trust her when she first started coming nope. in? Nope. I was literally just gonna ask you the same question. Surprisingly, I kinda did. You did? Only Even okay because the men were calling her a bitch. Well, yeah, kind of that. But also the fact that she was coming in quiet mm-hmm. and um clearly challenging the rules from day one yep. because 
you know, she, uh, like, wearing the headscarf yeah. right away and stuff. She's I like, think, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I think that that set a tone a little bit for, like, who she was in being, maybe having a strong opinion independent of her parents. Mm-hmm. So I think from the beginning that actually did give me a little faith in her. And because she was so quiet, it made me think that for sure she had a power. Not the one that we found out she had. But I thought she maybe had a mental power, like some type of Ooh. mind reading or something was originally okay. had been my guess because she was so quiet in mm-hmm. conversation. But so I, I did find her a pretty compelling character. And now through the end of the book, since we find out that they were actually friends when they were little. Yeah. She I, knew her. Yeah. And so I think that they're going to, maybe she's going to help heal some of like the memory loss or something okay. for Juliet. That's my guess. Yeah. I love your thought. I love your thought. Before we get to the end of the book. Oh, before, sorry. No, no, you're, you're <laughs> totally fine because you were perfectly on with your thought. I didn't trust her oh, yeah. in the beginning. I didn't, I, I just didn't know. I didn't know about her and like the the son we're just unknown name boys don't matter boys don't matter <laughs> fuck it <laughs> so, it's gonna be wine before this episode i i love it it makes it more entertaining <laughs> so um drunk rambling the the brother him and warner were friends and so he was like oh we know all this information about him blah 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 and then she comes in and i thought I didn't think that she was going to be the one to, like, heal Julia and, like, be this, like, unknown person to come in and, like, save the day and... Do you spill your wine, girlfriend? No. Oh. That's okay. At least it's just in the Shatter Me series. Right. At least it's not in, like, your Kingdom of Ash book. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Don't worry about it. Everything's okay over here. (laughs) So while I may not have, like, trusted her and known about her in the beginning, I I really, really loved that she was the person to come in and, like, help Juliet. Because, like, women power. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> As Shelby says, women like, power. Women power. <laughs> women power. <laughs> Oh but God. for real, that's how I no, feel. When, I mean, it was nice when they were like up in the tree, street sign, yes. wherever they were. The, they were oh, yeah. High. Yep. And it, Hater. I pictured it. Hater is the name of uh, the guy. Oh, ironic. Because <laughs> he's hater. a hater. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah. Um, what, so, questions. What do you think? Uh, do you think other sons and daughters of the Supreme Commanders are going to come in and, like, be against Juliet? Because I know right now they said that, like, they're going to come in and just see how they feel. What do you think Mm. is going to happen? I think there's going to be a split. I think the kids that came clearly all have, like, some angst against their parents and how things are run. Okay. But I... Well, because I think they all kind of express that, that they don't necessarily agree with the... With like with their parents' thoughts of like well, how Nazira the world should be did, run. But I don't. Did no, the, I, th- I thought the other kids they? kind of were like uh, okay. Where maybe she expressed, maybe she Nazira did. said that the other kids also were like meh. Right. Um, but I think there's going to be a couple of kids that are like really loyal to their parents, and then I think there's going to be some of the kids that are like, no, we want to change it up. We think what they're doing is wrong, and so I think the like main fight of this second. Let's say the second trilogy of the yes. series, so the second half there of the go. series. There we go. I like that. Um, I think it's going to be more like the kids versus kids. I think this the Supreme Commanders are not really going to matter very much. Okay. I think it's going to be more of kids versus kids that are, like, driving the action. Okay. And that there's going to be, like, that divide between them, which will be hard on Warner because yeah. Warner grew up with all of them. Right. Clearly so did Juliet. Yeah, right. Um, were you shocked by the ending? Or did you see it coming? I don't know that I maybe saw that specifically coming. I don't know that I was, like, that shocked, though. Really? Either. I don't know. I maybe was a little shocked that she had a sister who was involved. Yeah. But, like, they introduced the sister, I think, a lot earlier, didn't they? Was no. that just in the very end? That was just at the very end. So, at the very end, we find out that... Um, no, because Warner has as having all that heartache about knowing that he tortured Juliet's sister. So we knew a lot earlier 
that Juliet's sister was involved. No. Okay, we didn't know she had a twin sister. We knew that the adopted family had another sister. We didn't know that that was Juliet's twin. Did they say twin? I thought it was a twin. I thought it was just older sister. Was it sister. just a sister? I thought it was Older twin. sister, because she said that she was five and her sister was whatever. I oh, I thought it was a twin. I don't, I think I don't know why I was thinking that. Yeah. I don't know why I was thinking that. No, because well, it's it's like maybe I could try and find it. I, I think it's like halfway through that um, Castle tells uh, yes. Warner, hey, like you need to tell Juliet because right. you did this to her sister. So we know already. So I think that's why I wasn't that surprised that it was like a family in power because... Well, so I think that was part of the surprise for me that I'm kind of talking about. So in that meeting with Castle, we find out Juliet was adopted. Her real parents are alive. She has a sister. Warner has tortured her for two years. Their entire lives were an experiment. The commanders were sent from a letter from Anderson to kill Juliet. Um, So that was part of the surprise for me Mm. uh, that... I think we're talking about... I didn't realize how much of an involvement that Juliet really had Mm. in all of the commanders and everything. See, I think... I think I had felt hints of that from the asylum. Did you? I didn't see it at all. Because remember, we talked about, like, we're like, well, are the other people really in the asylum? Are they playing noises or whatever? Like, there were so many games that they were playing... Mm -hmm that the fact that she was being so closely monitored for so long, right. I kind of figured that she was, that there was something. I knew, on. I knew there was like, there was something that was going to come from all of that. I guess I just didn't see it as this, mm. which like, I gotta say, I do, I do a really good job of like, while I'm reading, I'm not predicting. I have to go back and be like, oh, I probably could have seen that coming. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm the opposite. I, even when I watch movies, I'm You're the opposite. Predicting. I'm like always trying to find like, oh, I think this is going to happen next. <laughs> I love it. Well, then it calls for like a really great discussion while you're talking mm-hmm. about the book. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it coming. I thought that was crazy. I have questions for you about the ending though, but do you have more before then? Um, no. I think... No, I don't think I have much more. I probably my favorite part was when she she's at the symposium and then like everybody drops dead and I was like, oh shit. So that's actually what I want to talk about yes. because you texted me. So I had texted you like 150 pages into yep. the book and I was like, please tell me this is worth reading. <laughs> I'm like, get through it, get through it. You I got was it. Hurting. And you said there is a reason she's doing what she's doing and. I don't think that I felt that was answered in this book, but that did make me wonder if there were, I, for some reason, I thought there was going to be some type of mind control. Like there was going to be somebody that had that ability then that was like forcing, not forcing, but maybe nudging Juliet to do things. Like how far have you gotten in Miss Bourne? Enough to know what the different medals do? Yes. Well, no, 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 no. I just know the medals do something. Oh, but you don't know what the medals do? No. Okay. Um, I mean, it's like, <laughs> but I'm sure they have some influence on like different things that you're able to do or somebody's able to do whatever. to you. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just going to compare it to something like that. But yes, yeah, so I thought that maybe there was somebody who was like, who had showed up when she was in sector 45 that was like nudging her behavior <gasps> and that there was like, you know, when they condition, they talk about like in movies and stuff, they talk about conditioning yes. spies with like a specific code word that makes them do this thing sub- up, like subconsciously. Like Pavlov's dogs, a hundred percent. Right. And so I thought that. The way you had said that, I thought that there was going to be somebody who had been subconsciously influencing Juliet to like make poor decisions or make extreme emotional decisions. Mm -hmm. And so that moment when she killed everybody, I was like, was that actually Juliet or was there someone influencing her to make such an extreme action? Oh my gosh. I didn't even think about that. So that's what I thought you were trying to say. And I kept waiting to get (gasps) to that. No, it wasn't. And then I was like... (laughs) Huh. I was like, was that really just her being crazy? Which I also want to say, I predicted that. You did I not say did. that she was going to go off the deep end mm-hmm. and that she was going to be ill prepared and then she was going to have to come back? <laughs> One of my notes it. in here is, damn, Juliet's having a minty B right now. <laughs> I'm not Gen Z, but I sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't mean that. I meant like. But now She's doing can, things. Yeah. I can 100% see your view. 
I meant more like just 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 you wait you're gonna see that like the way she's reacting is gonna come back on her that's probably oh. what I should have said well but it did yeah. plant then I think an interesting scene because I feel like then I read some of those scenes differently yeah and so I I don't Ooh. know I'm just curious if there is like other influences I would not be surprised and I love that you brought that up because I have not I've not Cause yeah, cause like thought that in general, besides Warner reading emotions, have we seen very many other intrinsic abilities? Not really. Um, Most of them are like, I can move things with my mind, or mm-hmm. I can fly, or I'm really strong, or I deal with electricity. But we haven't met very many people yet that have intrinsic abilities like I can read minds, or I can influence thoughts, or I can. You know, yeah. like more on that side. I'm Sleepwalking, super you know, any of those types of things. Right. I I actually so in the first couple of books that we were doing, this one doesn't have as many tabs for like things that happened because there wasn't really anything that happened till the end. Um, but for the beginning I was like counting superpowers and who had what power and like predictions and thoughts for the powers that they had. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't really done that as much. And I'm wondering if that was done on purpose because maybe there are things happening in the background that's going to be like, oh, we should have seen that coming. Do you think any of the other children of commanders are going to have powers? I Besides Nazira? Besides Nazira? Uh, yes, I hope so. Because kind of like you were saying earlier about how you think that the kids have a lot of different views from their parents and the parents are going to be like, ah, you're the old generation, whatever. I think that the new people are going to be like, we're not going to announce our powers because we know what happened to them. This is going to give us power. And so we're going to keep that quiet, just like Nazira did. Yeah, I agree. I think there's. I think that most of the kids are going to have powers. Well, we already know Warner and Nazira do. That's what I was going to say. So, and like, do you think the others know of Warner's no, powers? No. no. I don't think that any of them know about each other's mm-hmm. because they were pitted against each other so much. Yep. But I think that... I think that more of them will have some power, even if they're unaware that it is a power, right. kind of like Warner was. Oh. So, random side note, what did you think about the girlfriend, the ex-girlfriend? Dude, I was cackling. Oh my I God. was laughing. She was... Dramatic. We don't call women crazy. She was crazy. <laughs> she was dramatic. See, I don't think you can say that yet, though. You're because right. Because we don't actually know what their relationship looked like. We only have Warner's perspective. True. Who says, oh, that didn't matter to me. Well, and then he did also say, you know what? I could have gone about this in a better way. But he did say that he had always communicated in words that it was like that he didn't love her and he wasn't going anywhere. So I think that maybe she did read more into it. But I will say, you know, sometimes guys act like, oh, you're crazy. But then maybe like act a different way. Like I know that you've experienced that in your single life. Oh. I can think of Men's one specific person that I spent two fucking years on. That saying something and meaning another. A hundred percent. So. And how much you dive into every little single thing that they say. You know what I think that's kind of like a form of? Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> could see the comparison. You could see. But it'll be just because it's like you're taking every little single scrap that they have. And so everything that they say you think is like that's real and that's what they want and that's what they say and you hinge on that hope yeah but yeah yeah I yeah it's funny because that was probably another one of my favorites of the book because I was like oh relatable I've been through that girlfriend I'm sorry you went through that I did think it was funny though when Warner's like trying to backpedal and make it sound like it's not a big deal and he goes it was only physical and Juliet's like that had me cringing (laughs) that was definitely a I think good representation of how men can be dumb in what they say and what they think the reaction should be. Absolutely. Yep. And so I had a very, I had a very strong reaction to that, which is why I think I like that part so much because like it made me be like, Warner, come on. Did you really think that? No, you didn't. I like, I like kind of was on the side of the ex-girlfriend for a while. Like, yeah, she was like a little crazy, but like we could admit to some crazy. Yeah, well, like, that's why it was like, you called her crazy, and I was like, I think we can't call her crazy unless we actually know more Well, I thought I was acting crazy in the situation oh, okay. that I was in. Yeah. Can you really say I wasn't? <laughs> no. 
We know she, I, we, I know that I was. I know that I was acting like that. Maybe a little crazy. <laughs> but if you guys knew the situation. You'd understand. I'd be acting crazy too. I. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just thought, I thought that was like a fun little part of the book that was like super that relatable. Was funny. That was funny. It was funny. So, okay. At the end, how did you feel about, um, here's what I've written down. And Julia is now back in, in New Zealand with her biological parents, seeing Polaroids of her as a kid with letters from Anderson, pictures of her and Warner as kids, magical cuffs on her wrists. Her powers are disabled. Mm-hmm. I had to stop reading for a second and be like, it was, this was all in like a page. And I was like, what in the fuck knuckles? Yeah. (laughs) Well, also they haven't once said what her sister does, right? Only that it's important and that they torture her to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what, what the heck are you doing? I feel like she must, my guess for her power. And I want to, actually, I want you to say your guess first. What, what power do you think her sister has? I don't have a guess. I was so no. shocked to learn that she had a sister and that her sister's been involved and Warner's been so like... So think now. Reflect on the book and the other people's powers that we know so far. What power do you think she could have that would be so important that they would be literally keeping her submerged and torturing her on and on and on? Hmm. From what we've talked about, do we think she can influence people? That could be a good one. I think she gives reads prophecies. I think she can see the future. Stop. That's a really, really good prediction as well. Kind of like an no, I'm not gonna say it. Um because <laughs> we're gonna have those coming out later. Yeah. Um so oh I think ooh. she can see the future. And so I think that they're constantly it's kind of like um there's a is it is it a yeah, I guess I can't do the Zodiac Academy spoiler. But if you've read Zodiac Academy, you'll know who I'm yeah. talking about. Um I, I think it's like that. I think that there's like visions or something where she's like seeing the future. And so they're keeping her like submerged and constantly trying to get these like visions or prophecies from her. That is such a good what else would exactly. they What else would be that critical? Well, okay. Think about it in this world though. They basically take anybody who has these kinds of powers and just like... Puts them in an asylum, basically. Or kills them. Or kills them. Or kills them. The only ones they keep are ones that are useful. useful. Right. So she can influence people. So Shelby's prediction, she can... Juliet's sister can influence people. But she's not even near people. So how is she going to influence people she's not seeing? That's why they're keeping her submerged. That's why they're keeping her So you think she can, like, reach out into the world and influence people even though though she's not near them? Yeah. Kind of like how Mm -hmm. Warner can, like, feel people's emotions. She can make people feel things. Makes me think of uh, X-Men. Or Uh, Mistborn. uh, Not at a distance like that. It makes me think more of X-Men when, uh, what's his face, the guy in the wheelchair... Ah, Have you seen oh, X-Men? Yes, 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 yes. I know exactly what you're and talking about. And he hooks his head up to the thing, and he reaches out into the world and can, like, find all the people. Yeah. That's what that made me think yeah. of. Yeah, I think mine, would, for her, it would be, like, closer proximity, like, not as far, but kind of mm. like that. So, hmm, you think she... Jenna's I think she thought. can... Yeah, my guess, my guess for Juliet's sister is that she either <laughs> is, like, reading prophecies, whether it be, like, in word form or that she can literally see visions of the future and that yeah. they're using her to predict when uh, there's going to be, like, rebels that speak up or when Ooh. there's going to be, like, I don't know, big things like that. And so I think oh. that they're using her to stay a step ahead of everybody else. Oh, I like it. I like your prediction. I'm excited to see you. Now I'm excited to see. So <laughs> looking back, yeah, do you think differently about the book? Or I'll, I'll do you still hate to, it? I'll bump it up to two stars. I just, I, uh, yeah, some of it is like, you know, different structure, different folks. Not enough happened for me in this book. Mm-hmm. The last, I, yeah, like the last 20 or 30 pages were cool. And since we've already committed to reading it, that was enough to keep me that yeah. I'll, I'll read the next and I bet it'll be better. But I think it's going to be kind of like the first half of Shatter Me where, um, cause you know, I think of it as like two separate chiller trilogies oh, within absolutely. one series. Yeah. And I think we both felt the same way about the first shattered me where it was a lot of internal dialogue and internal yeah. feelings and stuff. And then the second book was like super plot heavy. And then the third book was maybe a mix. Yep. And so I'm anticipating a little bit of that again. Okay. And so I think that defy me is going to be more plot driven. I, love I think it. there's going to be 
Like the rest of the kids are going to show up. I think she's going to have to deal with the repercussions of having killed every other uh, <laughs> commander of all of the districts in like North everybody. America. Everybody was that like four hundred something like that. People something. that that whole scene in itself was just like holy fucking shit. Yeah, she just killed everybody. Everybody. So I think, but you know what? That also was a big show of her strength. And so I think that that's going to make the other commanders think twice. Yep. And so I I think the next book is going to be really plot driven with dealing with the repercussions of that. The other kids showing up, maybe forming alliances between some of the kids and and whatever. And then like, obviously I think our big battle of like who's going to win and take over the world and figure out how the world is going to look is going to be in the last book. Yep. I think so too. And there's been enough environmental hints too, or like environmental conversations along the way that I think the end of Imagine Me, which is the last book, I think that the end of Imagine Me is going to be like reforming how the earth and the world looks. I love it. What do you think? I love that. Honestly, everything that you just said, now that you said it, I'm like, (laughs) I hope this is what happens. Now that you said it, you think it's true. I'm like, I hope this is what happens. Like... (laughs) I love it. I love it. I love it. But here's what it is. I always love your predictions. I always love your thoughts. And so I know. (laughs) Well, and you always bring up like great discussion questions too. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't think that. Oh, Oh, now we have another question. So no, I love it. I think it's wonderful. Um, I, here's what I can say. Did your rating change at all after talking about it? It went down a little bit, but oh, sorry. (laughs) No, it's, it's totally fine. I think I was just so excited about the last 50 pages that I was like, oh my gosh, four and a half stars. And then as soon as I was like, "Eh." reflecting on the book as a whole. Right. I just, I loved the last 50 pages. I would have given four stars to the last 50 pages too. It's just, I have to average it across the whole book. Of course. And it just, it took too long for me to get there. For me, Agreed. personally. I think since I was, like, more diving into Warner's in Warner, perspective. He, exactly. I was like, hmm, well, let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes. So, I am excited. I'm really excited to see what happens in the next book because at this point, at this point, Julia is shackled in magical handcuffs. All we know is she is finding out more about her past. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait to see how that all ties in. Do you think that she'll bring back any memories that have been suppressed from her early childhood? I hope so. I hope she's able to start to like learn more about her past. Cause again, character growth. I love that. But I, all I can say is I hope, I hope that she starts to learn more about it and how it all kind of connects to everything that's happening now. Cause she's much more of a main character in this world than we thought she was. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Do you have any other thoughts on this book, Jenna? I think those are had some strong thoughts, but I think those I think, were I think so too. 